Hey, this is Oscar with One Stop Media Group. And in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about how PPC advertising can grow your business. So this is whether you have a local business like a dentist office, a law firm, an accounting firm, landscaping business, HVAC, carpet cleaning, um, or any other really any other type of business that has customers that are online. And then at this point in time, just about every customer is gonna be online for every business. So in this video, we're gonna cover a few things. We're gonna talk about Google AdWords and the pros and cons to it, uh, the pros and cons of Facebook ads, uh, what kind of budget you need in order to run ad ads on those platforms, uh, the, re the results to expect from running ads on either platform, and whether or not you and your business should pursue um, pay-per-click management or running ads. So first things first is before we get started, what are ads? So we're gonna break it down into both Google AdWords and Facebook ads. So for starters, Google AdWords, if you're, let's say, in, I keep on messing up, let's say you are in uh, San Francisco, right, that's your city, and you're wondering, or you're looking for a, you know, whether you wanna go out to eat, whether you have a problem at the house with your plumbing, whether you're looking for, um, you know, a mechanic shop around your house, you usually go into Google and type in San Francisco uh, mechanic shop, right? And then you'll hit enter, and you're gonna get a search, uh, you're gonna get back re search results for that particular um, search phrase, San Francisco Mechanic Shops. Now here in this specific example, we have no ads here. This listing right here is your is your, uh, is your local three pack. So now it's just gonna show three people and their locations within Google. Then your following listings here, these next 10 are gonna be your organic listings. So these are your local three pack. This is your local three pack right here. Then you have your actual um, organic listings right here, which are another 10. So you have three right here, 10 right here, and then you have ads down here. As you can see here, you have Christian Brothers and, Mo and um, YourMechanic.com running ads in Google AdWords. Now, sometimes you'll also have ads up here above the local three pack. With Google AdWords, that's where you'll be. Here where it says, you, you see this little green box where it says ad. These, this is, these are businesses paying uh, money in order to show up on the first page of Google. So now let me try Austin carpet cleaning and let's see what we have here. So in this search results, you can see there's there's actually four ads uh, in on the first page. So you have one ad, two ads, three ads, four ads here. And again, these are businesses paying Google AdWords a set amount of money to show up here on the first page. And it's only when I, I or an actual visitor clicks on this link does the business get charged. So if you scroll down, then you have again your local three pack, your organic listings, and then you have more ads down here. So Google AdWords is is paying money in order, you'll pay Google AdWords money in order to show up on the first page, and you only actually pay the money once someone actually clicks on your link and goes to your landing page. So that's what Google AdWords is. I'm more than certain you've used it at some point in time um, if you use Google at all, because again, that's how Google makes their money is by selling uh, advertising spots to businesses. Businesses pay a certain amount of money to show up on the first page of Google. So uh, that's a quick a quick rundown of Google AdWords. So let's go back to the slides here. So some pros, some the pros to Google AdWords is your ads, you, you can show your ads based on search intent. And basically what that means is, again, I came here and said, I'm in Austin and I need carpet cleaning services. So I'm gonna, I'm able to, sh I'm able to target these specific keywords to show my ad when someone searches this. So if someone were to search for um, uh, teeth whitening, then I can run ads targeting specifically this keyword and now I'm gonna be shown to people that are already searching for the services that I offer. Now my job is to only is, is to give myself the chance to be one of the top listings for a, poten a potential customer to click on. So what it means by search intent is people, your, your customers are already searching for your types of services in Google. Now just you having to be that one website that they click on and call and book with you in order to get that money. So it's, it's, it's more of based on you just need to put yourself in front of the right set of people at the right time. And because again, they're literally searching for your services. So if, if you need, you know, if you need plumbing repair, if you need to put Austin plumbing, plumbing repair, and that's me having an issue with my plumbing. I need a plumber, I'm in Austin, and now I just need to find the right person, the right plumber to come fix my problem. So it's based on search intent. So let me just exit out of these. Um, you can also show your ads in geo-specific areas. So let's say, again, uh, 
we can target between zip codes maybe so we can target austin plumbing just in general and that'll target kind of all of austin um but maybe you know that you get customers through a very specific zip code maybe there's three zip codes that you know 80 percent of your customers are coming through well instead of trying to target the entire austin area you can target just those specific three um three zip codes that most of your cu customers are coming from so this would be the entire austin area but maybe you know that you know up n upper north is where you get most of your customers so you can target just the upper north uh area zip codes and get most of your customers through there so again geo targeting is very effective inside of google adwords and uh, another great thing is that most advertisers that are actually advertising on google aren't doing the best job so even if you just spend a little bit of time and effort uh, to get to set up your own campaigns, your, your own Google AdWords campaigns, you'll be a lot better off than most of these advertisers because a lot of them are just simply throwing money and not testing or optimizing their campaigns. They're just throwing a little bit of money and hoping something works. And if you just spend a little bit of time and effort and commitment into properly running your campaigns for, um, for maximum efficiency, and really optimizing the campaigns overall, you'll get a lot better results than what most typical advertisers will get. And lastly, it's target new customers based on their problems and search intent, and that goes exactly with what I said here. But again, I, I just wanna keep on clarifying is that in Google, when someone searches for something, they're already telling you they have a problem, right? If they have uh, a car and they need, a, they need a, a mechanic, then they're gonna type in Austin car mechanic. And they need, and they're gonna look for a mechanic that had that's that's able to service them. If they have an AC problem, then they'll go to the Google and type in HVAC companies, Austin HVAC co companies. And now they're looking for someone that can that has technicians that can go out to their home location and fix their AC or their heater. So it's again, it's 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 they already know that they have the problem. They want a solution to their problem, and now it's just them finding the right person or the right company in order to come here or to their location and service their problem. So you just need to make sure you're targeting the right set of keywords with the right offer, and you need to make sure that your landing page and a few other things are properly optimized, and you'll be uh, in, in a higher chance and a higher likely chance of success compared to many other advertisers within Google. So now, of course, there's always going to be some cons. Now, let's say something like if you want, you know, uh, HVAC plumbing, HVAC plumbing, uh, dentist. Those are, are highly searched for keywords because it's a very, it's a very popular service to have because there's, there's just so many homes in certain areas, right? Austin is a large city, so there's going to be plenty of dentists. There's going to be plenty of plumbers. There's going to be plenty of, 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 of professional jobs out there that are able to service the area. Now, if you live if you live in a much smaller city, right? So Austin is you know has is top ten, I believe, um, cities in the U.S. Now, if you go to the you know the second to last city in the U.S., that means the po the population size is much much smaller. So um, sometimes you're not gonna have as many keywords uh, being searched for every month. So let's say every month in Austin they search for uh, Austin dentist a thousand times per month. Every month, a thousand people will go into Google and type in Austin dentist to look for some type of uh, dental services within Austin. Now, let's say you live in a very, very small city and the same keyword, right? Let's say whatever, the, whatever your city may be and you put city dentist, you may only have a hundred searches per month. So that's where you are limited. Where maybe there's just not enough, being, not enough searches being made within your city for certain keywords for you to really blow up like you would in other bigger cities. So, again, and and the bigger city you are, there's probably going to be more uh, a higher volume of keyword searches per month for specific keywords. So in this case, let's say um, you know Austin dentist has a thousand searches per month. But if you're in a much smaller city, then you're probably only going to get a hundred searches per month. So that means it's it's you're not going to have as the potential of getting as many customers. But that doesn't mean Google AdWords is not going to benefit you. It just, you just have to um, you just have to manage your expectations and say, okay, there's only a you know x amount of searches being made per month for this specific keyword. So I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna say I'm gonna get a hundred new customers per month with Google AdWords if there's only a hundred searches being made. And there's you know ten different spots on the first page of Google that someone can go with. So you just want to make sure you're managing your expectations with uh, your actual campaign. So you make sure so you know that you're gonna have a successful campaign, but not think you're gonna get you know 
a hundred new customers when the data is just not going to show it and you just it's just not going to work because you don't have the numbers there in place. And the next con is it can be expensive depending on the industry that you're in, depending again on the volume of search you're getting per month for whatever service you're offering or industry that you're in. So um, again, this is a pay per click campaign. So it is every time someone goes on Google and clicks on your specific ad, you'll be charged for it. And there's a, a lot of variables that go into how much it's gonna be, co the, the price per click is, is very dependent on a lot of variables. But you know, some industries you might get it might cost a dollar to three dollars per click and there's other industries like let's say the legal area for you know personal injury for uh divorce lawyers that those might cost anywhere between seven to twenty dollars per click so depending on what industry that you're in depending on the volume depending on the size of your business and the budget that you can have it can be very expensive to run google adwords now that doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be expensive you can always you can always set up your campaigns and optimize them to decrease the cost as you go on so maybe you'll start off paying five dollars per click but over the course of the next two three months that you're optimizing your campaigns and you're showing google that you know what you're doing and that you're doing what they want you to do then you can decrease that that, that cost per click right if it's if you're getting five dollars per click over two, three months after optimizing your campaigns, that, that cost will go down from five bucks to four seventy five to four fifty to three dollars. And then it'll it'll you know it'll fluctuate between two fifty to four fifty um, depending on you know depending on the day, depending on the keyword, depending on the volume. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to pay a high price every single time. If you're properly optimizing your campaigns, you can decrease that cost as you're going along and getting better at your campaigns. All right, so now let's switch on over to Facebook ads. So how does Facebook ads work? Well, I'm more than certain you've been on there. You've scrolled through your newsfeed and then you've seen some ads. And the ads always have the little sponsored, um, little sponsored text underneath the company name. So right there you can see it's sponsored. So this is the company AppSumo paying money in order to put this ad in front of me. So unlike Google AdWords where it's search intent, where in Google you're actually searching for something. and Facebook, you're not really searching for any keywords, you're just scrolling on by. So the way advertisers can target you is by your interest and dem demographics. So let's say that you have this, let's say you yourself as a, as a Facebook user, and you tell Facebook, hey look, I'm 34 years old, I'm a male, and I like sports and cars. Then a, a business that has either some type of automotive product or something that can fit your type of profile, then they'll say, hey look, we have this offer going on, only target people that are males that are aged between 25 and 40 and that they like uh, sports cars. And that's how that ad will be displayed to you based on your interests and behaviors and your demographics. So uh, going back to the slide, the pro is again, um, you can show these Facebook ads on a geolocation just like with AdWords. So again, if you know that your customers are you know, upper north, down south, in specific zip codes, you can add that targeting feature within Facebook to only target specific geolocations. Uh, next is, I'll uh, skip that one for a little bit. Uh, again, just what I just mentioned, you, you're gonna target your, um, you, you can target your Facebook ads based on demographics and behavior. So imagine your business right now, who's your ideal customer, right? If you look at your, your past 50 customers, you know, what type of profile do they fit? Are they male, female? Are they married, not married? Are they, you know, do they have a salary of 45,000 and up? Are they, do they have dogs? Did they just purchase a vehicle? You can get that specific and say, okay, we see that our most ideal clients are, you know, between the ages of 40 to 60. Um, they're married. They have, you know, two kids or, you know, two grandchildren, you know, and then you can set up your targeting to fit that exact profile. And then Facebook will do the heavy lifting and go find those people to show your ads to that type of uh, demographic group. So it can, get, it can be very, very, very powerful to use Facebook ads. And again, just like Google AdWords, most advertisers aren't too good at running Facebook ads. So if you just spend a little, a little bit of time and commitment and effort into really drilling down on your campaigns and, and really structuring a, 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 a well thought out plan for your campaigns, you'll see a lot better returns than what most advertisers will get by just throwing 10, 20 bucks and then calling it a day. So some of the cons, of course, just like AdWords, is it can be expensive depending on the on the on the um, on the group that you're trying to target. Again, if you're targeting the same type of profile that everyone else is trying to target, right? Then that then there's a higher demand for a specific segment of the audience. Then that 
audience is going to cost more to display your ad in front of because so many other businesses are trying to put their ads in front of that same group. So it can be expensive. But again, just like AdWords itself, the more you work on it, the more you optimize it, the more you tweak it, you can decrease the overall cost. So if you're spending, you know, a uh, hundred a hundred dollars per week, as you um, as you optimize, as you go, as you tweak, as you change a few things, you can decrease that cost week by week or click by click, depending on the type of campaign that you're running. But it, it, you're not always gonna be paying the most money as you're running. The main thing you want to go after is like you always want to be decreasing your your overall cost without actually decreasing the number that you're getting but the main thing is you do want to decrease the actual cost that you're spending within facebook ads so moving on a big question is well what kind of budget do i need in order to run ads so the straightforward answer is as much as you can afford but the more the better right because the more money you can put into adwords or facebook the more data you can collect at a faster rate so if you're spending just a dollar a day or five dollars a day it's going to be a lot different than if you're putting $50 a day or $75 a day. So the more you can put, the more data you'll be able to receive at a quicker rate and the faster you'll be able to make those changes. So if you're just spending $5 a day, if you're just spending $5 a day, stay with me, $5 a day for 30 days, you're spending $150 per month. As opposed to, let's say you're spending 30 days per day for that month and you're spending uh, $900. So it just you'll be able to collect a lot more de data at a much faster rate and you'll be able to tweak a lot more and have the opportunity to, to have more success when you're spending more money. But on that same notion, just because you have a bigger budget doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be more successful. Again, if you're just trying to throw money without properly optimizing the campaigns, without creating landing pages, without creating, without improving your copy, then you're not gonna get the results that you can get if you spend the time and energy on properly optimizing your campaign. So it's not just about, okay, we have $2,000 and let's just put all this money into ads. No, there's quite a few other things that you have to do in order to run a successful campaign. So even if someone has a $500 campaign budget, but they're doing everything right and optimizing everything where they need to optimize, as compared to someone that has $2,000 and they're just throwing at it and not optimizing anything, not tweaking anything, not changing anything, then that person with $500 budget will probably get better results because they're actually taking the time and effort to actually optimize their campaigns campaigns for better results as opposed to the person that is just throwing the money out there hoping something good happens. Now, what kind of results can you expect? Am I gonna be, you know, is your business gonna change overnight? Am I gonna have to hire five more people? Am I gonna increase revenue by 50%? Well, that's all gonna be very dependent on so many factors. And just to name a few, it's gonna be your target audience. So what type of business do you have and who is your ideal customer? Who's the one that's actually paying for your services? And are there a lot of them in Facebook and are they being targeted? Because the more they're being targeted, then by other advertisers, that means the more you're gonna have to pay in order to put your ads in front of their eyes. Uh, next is your offer. So again, is your offer compelling? Is it something that they actually want? Is it you know in high demand? Is it something that they that they can't live without? Is it something that they can go and get anywhere? Is there like is there you know do you have a unique um, do you have a unique value proposition that's gonna uh, that's gonna be different from the other com uh, competitor that you have? So what is your offer? Is it compelling enough for them to actually go with you as opposed to with someone else? Do you have a good reputation? Do you have good online reviews? Do you have good customer service? So all that really takes into the year offer and whether or not someone's gonna choose you over their competitor. Uh, next, you have more technical stuff like your landing page optimization. So when you actually create your campaigns and your landing pages, are they properly optimized? Are they designed for higher conversion rate? Um, are you writing out proper, are you improving your copy? Uh, as far as the actual words that you're putting on the page for them to take action, are you actually optimizing your campaigns for success? Are you able to decrease the cost per click or per lead with your campaigns over the next weeks or few months? You know, what's your sales process? If you're in the B2B space or if you have a, a sales cycle in the B2C market, then is your sales pro process properly optimized? Again, this doesn't have this, this, your sales process isn't directly connected to the success of your Facebook ad campaigns in terms of generating those leads and clicks and visitors. But let's say you're getting plenty of visitors, let's say you're, you're getting plenty of leads through Facebook ads or through Google AdWords, but your sales reps, your sales process isn't optimized. So now you're losing a lot of potential customers and money on the table simply because your sales process is not optimized. So even though it's your, your sales process is something external, it's still directly related to the success of your campaigns if you're not converting those leads into sales and into revenue for the business. 
And again, lastly, it's your overall business itself. Do you have a great customer service? Do you have a great customer experience? Do people like engaging with your business or is it like a drag? And, you know, it's always like they always got to jump through headaches and hurdles to get what they want. So all this takes into effect the type of results that you can get. You know, again, it's your budget, of course, and I didn't write this one down, so I actually put that to your budget. But there are so many videos, but it's very hard to say, even if you have two businesses of the same business, it's going to be completely different because it just, every it's, it's not going to be a cookie cutter method for every single business that you get even if it's the same type of industry and business you're always going to get different results that's just the way it is now people do wonder well you know i'm going to be spending money i want to make sure it works is it going to work for me like if you're if you're in the bdb or bdc space and your customers are online it's more than likely not going to work for you you just have to give it the time and energy and commitment in order to get the results if you just spend twenty dollars you don't get any results and you call it quits forever, you're not gonna get very far with that. However, if you spend you know, $300 per month for the next six months and you commit yourself to saying, I'm gonna try to get X amount of leads at X amount of price and I'm gonna work on it week by week, month by month, then you're setting yourself up for much better success with that method as opposed to just saying, you know what, I'll just throw $50. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll just call it quits and I'll move on to the next thing. You'll never get any results with that type of method. You have to be willing to give it the respected time, commitment, energy, and resources in order to make it work. If you don't, you're not gonna get the results that you could ha if, if, uh, if you don't put in the necessary time and effort. And I keep on repeating that because it's very important. It's not just about throwing money and hoping that it sticks. You have to have a systemized process in order to uh, really increase the chances of you being successful on Facebook or Google AdWords or really any other uh, pay-per-click platform that you can use. So should you use pay-per-click um, pay advertising? Is that a good fit for you? Well. Very, you know, this is this is something very generic because there are going to be so many different industries and businesses. But to be very generic, you should run PPC ads. You should be on AdWords or Facebook if your customers use Google or Facebook. And that's going to be for probably about 95% of all industries here is that your customers are probably on Facebook or Google. Uh, you should run PPC if you want to increase your lead and sales. If you're willing to try unconventional methods to grow your business. And if you're willing to spend, and this is the most important one, if you're actually willing to spend the time and effort to make it work. Again, it's not just about saying 20 bucks here, 40 bucks there, it didn't work, eh, I'll just call it quits. No, you have to be consistent and you have to be committed to working on it for a few months. You have to be willing to spend money. You have to be willing to try and tweak and optimize things to get the results that you want. Now, when should you not run PPC ads? When should you not? use Facebook or Google AdWords? Well, if you don't want to spend any time or money on anything new, right? If you just, you know, if you don't want to bother, if you're too busy, if you don't have the staff, if you just, if you don't want to spend time trying out something new, this is not going to be the channel for you because it, again, it takes a high level of commitment to make this work. And next is you want your business to change within 30 days. Again, that, that comes along with the time commitment thing. If you want to say, okay, I'm spending 300 bucks and in the next 30 days, I want my business to be completely different. I want to be making double, you know, twice as much revenue as I was making in the last 30 days. That's also not going to be a good thing. You're not setting up your expectations. You're not managing your expectations good enough for really for long-term success on AdWords or Facebook. So if you just want results right now, and if you're not willing to give it a try for, you know, a, a, a decent time period, then you probably shouldn't run um, you shouldn't use Google AdWords or Facebook ads. Other than that, I know we covered a lot of information here on this video. So if you have any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, leave those in the comment section down below. Other than that, I will see you on the next video.